Many thanks for staying with us and welcome to Political Paradigm. Of course, the political conversation continues right here on Channels Television. I'm Victor Mathias. Welcome to the show. I'm standing in for your regular host, Terry Ikumi. Now, my guest on the show today is a former member of the National Assembly, the Senate actually, and of course, he is an astute politician who goes by the sobriquet one-armed general. He is Senator Ethan Neji Achonu, the governorship candidate under the platform of Labour Party in the coming governorship elections in Imo State. Um, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Pleasure is all mine. Absolutely. All mine. Absolutely. So, so let me just kick off on a very uh, light note, um, uh, Senator. Like, how did you come about this sobriquet uh, one-armed general? Ah, that's a very long story. But we can cut Actually, it short, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it started as a one-man riot squad, one-man army, mm. one-armed general, and it stuck ever since. But I don't want to talk about it now so that you have to buy my book when it comes <laughs> out. Okay. No problem. The story of my life. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, we'll, we'll take uh, a look a at that. It will be a beautiful story to okay. read. Absolutely. But let's, uh, you know, get straight into the conversation now. Uh, looking at uh, your, your candidature, first and foremost, uh, you know, there's been some legal issues, you know, which, you know, has been out there, you know, within your party. How, how, how does that make you feel? I mean, uh, where are we currently with, with, with that? And, uh, you know, where does that, that place you? Um, actually, the... The only case that I can say is within my party is still in, in ongoing. It's the one filed by one uh, Ike Ibe, who claimed that uh, he, he had an, he, he was, we, he, he contested in, in the same primary with me. So he lost, he got two or three votes, I think. Then sort of later, we were surprised. He came up uh, to say that he went to another uh, uh, primaries under the uh, former caretaker chairman who had been relieved of his, of his duty. And then, uh, you know, that's the one we did was illegal. <laughs> so the one he did after that other primary that he took, participated in, you know, and lost was illegal and so that should uh, pronounce him the candidate of the party. That one is still ongoing. This other one, I was surprised uh, because two of my fellow contestants, one sued the other. Hmm? I was not party to the suit. You were not a defendant in the suit? Yes, I was, yes they, they, didn't, they didn't sue me. That one sued one other person. Both of them lost the primaries. So one now sued the other. This one claiming that he was the authentic uh, candidate, not the other person. You understand? Mm. I don't know how that came about because the other person had never been declared an, a candidate of the party. INEC had submitted my name. I mean, sorry, the party has submitted my name to INEC. So, INEC. so how that came about, nobody knows till today. So he just sued uh, the other person that he was uh, the authentic candidate, and the court should so declare him. So, and uh, I was not a party. The, uh, the authentic Labour Party was, because that, they now served Labour Party in the Apapa, uh, 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 of Apapa's camp office. So that we were not, we didn't know anything about it until when it was almost late. So that's why my party had to rush and join the case so that they don't go and do something crazy, you know. So, but the judge, in his wisdom, now said he had no jurisdiction to hear the matter and dismissed the matter. So, what did they do? So, because the matter was dismissed, that man now claimed that the judge, the court, had affirmed him as the candidate, having dismissed the matter. And there was no such declaration because when judge has no ju jurisdiction, there cannot be any declaration. So, but the social media was agog with the news. It went, everywhere went viral. That, you know, so that's what happened. Yeah. Mm. So there's no such, no such thing. My name is Inainek. Inainek that knows who the true candidate is. 
uh, well, uh, you know, time will tell, as, as they usually say. Yes. Uh, when it's time for the election, we'll see whose name will be on the ballot. But exactly. uh, you made mention of your party, you know, taking a, a profound step so, you know, they don't lose out on the ballot when the time comes eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, from how the elections went... Actually, there's a recent judgment. One other person who sued me, I win. we just had a judgment which affirmed me as a candidate, clearly, mm -hmm. without a equivocation, said... I am the candidate, and what I neck did was the authentic uh, primary I neck so, conducted. So you're, there's been a lot so, of there's been a, li a so lot of many, legal legal oh, legal yeah, fireworks. so many, so many legal <laughs> fireworks, but I'm taking them in my stride, you know. So as a one arm general, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you can say that again. Well, so going back to what I was, you know, talking mm -hmm. about how the elections went in 2023, we saw how uh, popular Labour Party was, you know, in in in, in the whole of the country. Uh, you know, and you're running on the platform of, of the Labour Party. But now, that's the party on, on one end. You know, what about you? How popular are you? Well, one can't really say how popular he is. You understand? It's people that, you know, perceive him. It's other people that can talk about him in, in that regard. Mm. But I can say that you are the one. You said it earlier. You said everywhere, one arm general, one arm general. I mean, that shows some kind of popularity, doesn't it? You understand? And since I'm everywhere, they know my name as one arm general. Mm. At least they know me for that, that I have one arm. Maybe that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. That's that, some that, kind of popularity. Yeah. That, yeah that's... But uh, having said that, I think I'm very popular. I think um, because the pressure that was mounted on me to come and run for this governorship was so intense. That at the, at the point, my wife, uh, the Nigerians in diaspora came to my house in London. My wife had to chase them out. She didn't want me to run. She, you know, because she said that, I mean, to take my attention away from the family, all that and all that. And we have kids, you know, so she had a little baby, a son, five-year-old son, and, and it, a nine-month-old baby, ten-month-old baby now. So that she doesn't want that. And, and you didn't put it's, that into consideration? I did, but you see, it's because of the situation in Nemo. The situation in Nemo is so bad, honestly, so bad. And then the, the argument that uh, the people who were asking me to come and run, argument that they were making, you know, it made sense to me in a way that actually I'm the person who should go and uh, do this so that, you know, all these things I've been championing over the years, all these causes I've been talking about, and I've also been leading by example that I should come and create an enabling environment for investment to thrive in Igbo land. Because you see, the insecurity in the Southeast is from Imo. It is from an axis in Imo that Anambara is being attacked. Is from the same uh, location. It's from one axis again that Enugu is being attacked. It's from one axis that Abia is being attacked. So the whole thing is from Imo. And then some parts of Ebony. You understand? So they believe that once Imo is gotten right, that there will be security in the entire Southeast. And then investments can come in and thrive. Mm. So that these young men, millions of them, unemployed, you understand, without any hope, without any hope at all in Nigeria, you know, so at least they can find something to do. They, they find their footing. Yes. So, so, I mean, you know, with regard to the situation in Imo, a lot of people would, um, how would I put it now, would have, um, say, divergent views, uh, you know, regarding your, uh, your, your, your estimation, uh, so to speak now. Uh, but that is, you know, that's a fish for another and at the times fry. Uh, but you're going to this election, uh, you know, against an incumbent who, again, you know, uh, you can also say is also popular just like you. Uh, what do you think your chances are going into this election? Well, I don't know about popular, you know. So, like I said, uh, we are the ones who can now say whether he's popular or not. Like, I'm not the one who can say how popular I am. Mm. So, as a matter of fact, the entire Imo state, nobody wants 
our governor to continue. I can tell you. Again, like I said, you know, <laughs> it's relative. Yes. So I'm just coming. Now, the, I'm ready for the election. I'm going to win him. And then, you see, the, the governor, he has, he has not really won any election in Imo State. I'm telling you. Okay, this one, the Supreme Court made him governor. He came fourth in that election. You understand? Uh -huh. The Supreme Court made him governor. But that won't happen this time around. I'm going to beat him. I'm going to win more votes than he, than he will. I will not allow anybody to write any result in Imo State. And then I don't think any, any court can overturn. I'm going to have a, a very, very clear victory over him come this election. 11-11, November 11. <laughs> I'm going to win. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's a significant uh, uh, date, you know, uh, yes. globally. Uh, you know, September 11, 11, 11, 11 yeah. uh, you know, the, the, the armistice. But um, so, so moving, let me just take you back uh, just a, a bit, uh, you know, speaking about, uh, you know, creating that enabling environment, yeah. you know, for, for entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. you know, the youth, you know, the women, you know, to, 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 to thrive. I mean, we've, we've seen in recent time uh, or recent past, the sit at home order. I mean, it's one thing that has, pretty much, you know, crippled economic activities in the whole of the Southeast. But that's just if we narrow it down to, to, to Emo State. You know, what is your take on this and how differently would you be handling the situation? Well, um, as soon as I start campaigning, everything will die down. Because the Igbos, they are not dumb. You see, they know who is who in Igbo land. They know who their true leaders are. Do you understand? What has been... Okay, you, you see, they, they are saying that I pour by pour by pour by pour. I, I don't really think I pour has anything to do with the violence in the Southeast. So this sit at home, and then I don't know how, why it is still ongoing. Even I hear, I'm not sure, because I, I don't have contact with Nnam Dikano, but... I hear that he made a press uh, conference and said that the sit at home should stop. So the young man in um, Finland is still issuing orders, counter orders. So quit means in their organization, there's a problem. Mm. So I'm going, once I start campaigning, I'm going to talk to them. In fact, there was a radio broadcast I made. I reached out to them. I told them, because how can you say you are Biafra and then you are killing fellow Igbos? So it's not correct. It is, those are not Igbos. I was a Biafran soldier. I was in the boys' company before it was disbanded. I even formed my own army after that because we were ready to die to defend our families and our parents. That's Biafra. Do you understand? <laughs> and for me, Biafra is a state of being. Biafra is this Akurulo. Come and invest at home. Create an economic... I believe in restructuring. I believe in Nigeria. The Igbos need a wider marketplace. In fact, if we can make West Africa one country, it will be good for, for Igbos. Because we are traders. We are industrialists. We are business people. That would be a tall dream. You understand? <laughs> I know. But it's achievable. After all, ECOWAS, I mean, EU, yeah. they're almost like a united country. They have one currency. So it's, these things are achievable. Because that's smarter. You need a bigger marketplace. That's why America is strong. That's why China is strong. Because their marketplace alone can sustain their economy. Then they will now move out. So To, to dominate other places. To dom dominate other places. You understand? Yeah. Uh, so, you see, these boys are championing this cause because the Igbos we are being marginalized in this country. Completely marginalized. Okay, look at Nam the Khan. The judge, the court freed him. Why is he being held? Can you give me one excuse why he's still being held? It's because he's Igbo. Well, that's that. Yeah, that, I'm telling you, that, that's, that's, my, that's my opinion. That, that exactly. That's my, that's my that, personal that, opinion. That, that interpretation, again, you know, is yes. subject to. to, to uh, my, um, they know, should other, tell us why. Well, that, that's my personal opinion. So, again, these boys, I'm going to talk to them. They're going to, they're going to relax until after this election. I'm going to promise them how I'm going to turn the whole place around. I'm going to bring sanity into the polity. Do you understand? So how are you going to do that? That's what we're trying okay, to do. Now, first of all, yeah. after I'm inaugurated, the day I'm going to be inaugurated, hmm? I'm going to 
You know, I've been championing local government autonomy since Obasanjo left. I've been championing it. I have, that's why NANS made me their life patron, Youth Council of Nigeria. I've been championing all these causes. I've been supportive of NLC. I, they, I, I, I galvanized them during some of these uh, constitutional amendments. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So in the past. So my, I believe in local government autonomy. I completely believe. If you, in fact, you are, so many television stations have interviewed me in the past. If you Google me now, you see everything I've said over the, in the past, over the years. I've always posited that it was since governors started hijacking the local government system that criminality started. Because in the past, you know, this, some of these boys, the politicians used to use them as thugs during elections. You understand? So, but they are local businessmen. Wise men, you can say, like in America. <laughs> so, look at businessmen. So, they used to give them contracts like uh, uh, covert drainage systems. They'll be grading roads. You understand? Uh -huh. So, they'll be clearing uh, school co compounds, you know, so many odd, odd jobs. And they'll be making money. The local economy will be running. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, everybody will be, was okay then until. They hijacked the local government system. All hell broke loose. Hunger came. And the criminality started. Let me tell you now. If there is a, an, an elected councillor in every ward in this country, tell me how a stranger can come, move into that area, and he will not be noticed. It's not possible. It's not possible at all. So that's why I completely believe in it. And immediately, that day when I'm being inaugurated, I will announce a setup of, uh, and I mean, um, you know, under the Constitution, there is nothing like ad hoc. The Constitution doesn't recognize it. So, but I will now, for six months, they will be there. And then if they want to recontest, after four months, they will resign. You understand? They will resign and then contest. And then I'm going to run the freest and fairest election in black Africa. If you are APC and you win, you, you'll be inaugurated. Are you following me? Anybody, because if you are not the choice of the people, uh, they can't work with you. Are you saying that is not being done currently? There's, no, there's been no local government election since our, uh, this incumbent came on, on board. And then even the former APC government, for eight years, there was not. It was when he was leaving that he now, and it is because this uh, uh, government, they know they're leaving. So they now want to do one, just like um, the former APC government for eight years conducted it just as about, they were about to leave. You understand? So this government now, they're about to do the same because I've been shouting you know, from the rooftops that, look, we need to do this. We're going to do this when we get in. So they're now about to do it. You can see. They have appointed SAs. How many? There are so many SAs that we have lost count. In fact, I'm even praying that they can appoint SAs from every family so that at least every family will have somebody who will receive salary for these three months <laughs> so they'll be able to feed themselves. <laughs> hey, that, 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 well, I want to take that as a joke. But, you know, <laughs> speaking, of, speak, yeah, speaking yeah. about, you know, yeah. again, employment, uh, what would you be doing differently? Because let's look at, you know, creating employment you made mention of you know grading of roads you know uh, you know the, the culverts and, and all of that is that enough what else that's, would you that's, be that's what that's else creating employment. exactly so what so else I'm just, would you, you be you doing say, i thought you talked about security how it's going to yeah that, that was place. that was that's, uh, that's why, just on one part yes. yeah now mm -hmm. i'm looking at unemployment yes you know in the country it is high in emo states clearly it is high as well yes so what would you be doing to create those jobs this is what I've been doing for over 20 years now as a private individual. Because I believe that the Southeast can become the epicenter of West African industrialization. Let me just say West Africa. Because of the industry of the people in, in, in Igbo land. In Nigeria, Nigerians are industrious, in fact, everywhere. But Igbos are known for that. You see, they leave their homeland, they go to Lagos, they develop Lagos. They go to Kano, they come to Abuja. In fact, almost all the infrastructure in this town, 
more than 60% are used up by the e-roads. That's contestable again. Yes. So Lagos, the same thing. Contestable yeah. as well. Okay. So now, what I've been preaching, which I've been leading by example, is that <clears throat> everybody, every well-to-do person, can go home and develop their own states. Okay? Create employment. Not just the Igbos. Look at the north. The, the north, they have abundance of solid minerals. And these are being exported. They're not being processed. And then as a senator, that's one of my first bills I sponsored. I said that no mineral resource should leave this country without being processed. What will it do? First, it will let us know what is being extracted so that government gets appropriate revenue from it. Secondly, we will acquire technology. Thirdly, we will create massive employment. And then fourthly, we will create a lot of wealth. Do you understand? That's why I sponsored that bill. You know? So, and the second one I sponsored, I reasoned, I said, why are we importing petroleum products and paying subsidies? Because there was, there's this rumor that most of these ships that bring in this, you remember how consumption jumped by billions of liters eh? for no just cause. Well, again, like you said, it's a rumor. No, it's not. Yeah, it's a rumor, but it's, it's documented. You understand me? It's documented. The number of liters being consumed a year. It's, it's, in public, it's in the public domain. Absolutely. Yeah, so, but I'm just saying that the rumor part of it is that the ships who bring in the petroleum products, they register it, the ship will move with the products. Turn around. You understand? Come again and register. Maybe on the third <laughs> trip, it will, they will dump the products and leave. That's so, the rumor. That's a rumor as well. And there's also this rumor. That people, the, these people who import petrol have said that they are tired of making money. It's even in, all over the social media. So these are rumors. So I now said, I calculated the uh, cost of um, exporting the crude, the insurance, okay? And then the cost of bringing refined products, the insurance. Then I said, ah, marginal oil fields. They're just being given to uh, con briefcase contractors and briefcase oil producers. Do you understand? Who don't add any value to the local economy. They just export the crude, pocket the money, and invest even, and maybe they invest their money abroad. I said, no, this is not sustainable. Then this, look at the amount of money being spent on turnaround maintenance for all these big refineries, and they have not been producing over the years. So, so this were some of the bills you passed as a senator. I'm, yes, no, I said, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I've not come to the bill yet. Okay. I'm telling you the background. Okay. What led me to sponsor such Those a bill. bill. Yeah. So, I know, in fact, I had to meet, before, before then, I had met with the former president, Jonathan. I discussed with him. I told him, I said, look, we can, we, that the government has spent billions dredging River Niger. What economic use have they put it to? Okay? Now, there's a plan to dredge Benue. Why don't we build modular refineries, side them along the river banks? Okay? Now, what it will mean is that we'll move crude in barges, say like from 20 to 60,000 barrel capacity. Because with 20, you can't really produce petrol and make profit. So you have to go up to 60 for it to be economically viable. So, I said, we can do that. And then what it will mean is that this equalization, price equalization, since you have the same thing in Taraba, mm. the same thing in Benue, the same thing in Oguni, uh, because they are all, you can cite one near a marginal oil field. You don't need to put it, I mean, near the bank of a river where you have marginal oil fields, like in Oguni. We acquired land in Oguni, acquired in Ohajiwema, we got in Taraba, spent millions of dollars trying to do this. Then we set up office in Houston. We now got, you know, Proda. I got Proda to partner, to arrange with Ventec for a partnership. Because I found out that these refineries is just you buy equipment from different companies, you couple it, it becomes a refinery. Because I reason I said in Biafra, 
We used to refine petrol crude and petrol. We made shift refineries. We produce diesel, produce petrol. So it's no rocket science. So I've, I investigated it, yeah. found out, and then when the government didn't, that deal didn't pull through, the president said that, I mean, he had a short time in office that he, you know, I'll not be able to. If you ask me, General, he calls me General. I said, General, yeah, when this year, this year, when, how long will it take? He said, 36 months. Uh -huh. Then, you know, so, and then when I now became a senator, I now brought a bill, sponsored a bill. That bill said that if you can bring proof, financial guarantee from a grade A bank that you have the financial capability mm. and managerial ability to run a refinery, okay? They will now give you a marginal oil field and ban you from exporting the crude. When you do that, and then the government will give us the same thing they did in the power sector, purchase guarantee, instead of paying subsidy. Yeah, did the bill pass? I, that's what, uh, you know, I, I had a conversation with you. Now, the, the bill didn't pass because I didn't stay long enough mm. in the Senate. I was thrown out of the Senate after seven months. So I don't know what happened to it after that. Nothing happened to it. It, it was dead on arrival. You know the cartel behind this uh, sub subsidy? So, so mm. sorry to cut you short, sir. So, you know, in all of this, you know, you're your uh, philanthropy, you know, your, your, your businesses and all of that. How many jobs would you say you've created? Uh, let's say... That's why you should let me land. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for want of time. No, uh, okay, all right. Yeah, for want I, of I time. I have created lots and lots of jobs. I have a construction company that's employing over 100 people. I have built a farm in my village now. That's my latest uh, investment. I built a farm that is supposed to be the biggest in the Southeast in terms of what it produces. It has a capacity to produce a million catfish every month. I have 260 greenhouses in that location. I have a cattle stockade that takes like 5,000 cattle. I have the largest snarry. I have hatchery. I have a feed mill at the location with a modern laboratory. Mm. You know, so, but that's not just it. I have, to, I tried, the first refinery, one of the refineries, I got a license to build a refinery, you know, Haji Ebuema. Mm. Now, which you spoke about earlier on. I didn't. No, I was talking about my plan with President Jonathan. Yeah. I didn't tell you I had a license. You understand? Yeah. Uh, so, why are we, I'm talking about the plan. To, you said, what plan? Your first question was, how do I want to create jobs? Yeah. That's where I'm going. Do you understand? You've now asked me again, what have I done? Yeah. How many jobs have I created? Yeah. Which I just answered now. Mm -hmm. Okay? But my plan to create jobs is still those ideas I had earlier. You said, as a governor, yeah. what plans do I have? That's what I'm trying to answer. What you're going to do differently. Yes, that's what I'm saying now. Because I said, from my past, you can now imagine, if I had all these ideas as a private citizen, then imagine when I have political power, when I'm the one who decides how things are going to go in that state, then use your imagination. <laughs> well... Uh, let's, <laughs> my imagination would, uh, let me just put my imaginations aside, you know. Okay. Let's, let's uh, focus on you uh, mm -hmm. specifically now. Let's uh, 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 look at relations now, you know, with, with bodies, uh, you know, say maybe the medical uh, uh, bodies, uh, you know, the labor bodies and, and all of that. Um, currently, I mean, your state doesn't seem to be in the good books of the medical, you know, body uh, due to, of course, you know, maybe non-payment of salaries, uh, arrears, and, and all of that. What would you be doing differently? How would you be relating with them differently to ensure that, you know, they don't down tools, you know, and leave people uh, who are not healthy, so to speak now, you know, at the mercy of, you know, quarks and, and, and all of that? Well, the, the medical doctors, um, they are very good friends. Um, they are darling. As a matter of fact, I initiated a project uh, since Obasanjo to build a health center in every local government in the country, which is being completed right now because governors have been fighting it, challenging it. We've been in and out of court over the years, which has prolonged the com completion of this pro wonderful project. At the point, I, cha you, the, I, channels was there, AIT, but I challenged Nigeria 
that since Mungo Park, if there is any other project that has touched the lives of rural Nigerians as much as what I'm doing, I will now hand over the project. I will leave the project and abandon it. So doctors know how I, how I am, what I think about the health uh, of our citizens, and then uh, the, uh, what I have done as a person. You understand? So they know I don't joke with them. In each of those health centers, there's a doctor's and pharmacist quarters. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And then, they are, you know, I, I, anyway, let's not... Uh, doctors are my friends. And engineers, in fact, they honored me, the, uh, uh, um, the Association of Engineers in Nemo State. They gave me an award. They honored me. You understand? Uh -huh. So the legal profession, I just completed a bar center in my place, uh, in honor of my father, you know, donated to the bar association. All these professional bodies, I work hand in hand with them. So Institute of Architects, the same thing. Mm. All of them, all the professional bodies. Mm. Because everything I do, I hire the best. I hire professionals, every business I do. So I work hand in hand with them. Yeah, because, uh, you know, that, that pretty much, uh, because as we currently are mm. experiencing, mm. Uh, you know, the labor is threatening to go on strike. Uh, you know, uh, we Don't forget I'm labor. Oh <laughs> well, I'm the Labour Party. This, this is not the this is this is not the first time. I mean, you know, we we've had a. You have a, never had a Labour Party we've, government. If you have we've, had, we've, we've, all we've, these problems, we've, we've had Adam Oshomole, you know, a former Labour leader, yeah. you know, become a state governor and still have have issues, uh, you know, no, with, 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 with Labour. So so it, it will not be the first time. So what will you be doing? Honestly, yeah. uh, I mean, you know, so that alone is not a yardstick to say that you're going to have a cordial relationship. You know, no, I, with, I intend with, to with actually this, so. because I will not owe salaries. I will, I like I like people to live a comfortable life. That's why I've been striving to provide employment so that people will be able to feed themselves, clothe themselves, take their children to school, be able to afford hospital bills. You understand me? Take mm. care of bills. That's why I've been doing that all my life. That's what I've been doing all my life. In fact. If I, if I invest, governors will fight it, attack it. I don't mind. I still go back. That's what the Igbos were asking me in Lagos. They said, one I'm general, you have been shouting at Kurula, Kurula over the years. You will in, where, the ones you have taken to Igbo land over the years, where has he left you? You have squandered billions, lost a lot of money in trying to develop Igbo land. I said, no, I'll keep doing that. Because if I don't do it, who will? That's why they said, okay, since you are bent on doing this, and you think that that's the best thing to do, come and become the governor because you are development-oriented. So I will come and support you. So I will know that nobody will attack us the way they're attacking you. you know, that's why, that's what, why I made up my mind. I've given up on politics in this country. You understand? I've given up completely. You know? so, but when P2B happened to Nigeria, I said there is hope. You understand? I said there is still hope. So I said, let me join his party. Mm. Yeah, so that we can, because all the things he believes in, he believes that all those things that I believe in that I've been doing over the years. So, so speaking yeah. of which, uh, you know, you, you made mention of how, uh, you know, you, you left the Senate, how you had a rerun election, you won, you know, you got your results in the INEC office, but lo and behold, another result you know, surfaced. surfaced and mm. you know in court INEC was not able to appear and defend that defend result. It, so, yeah. so, so going into this election now you know it's good you made mention of uh, Mr. Peter Obi uh, who uh, you know was of course like I said earlier on you know had a lot of support from you know many Nigerians but INEC uh, he didn't score enough votes to be declared the winner to be returned elected. Uh, a fact you that he is that still that's conjecture. A, a, a fact that he that's is conjecture. No no no, no that, that's facts that's what INEC that's what INEC said. Exactly. Good. That's but what INEC says. Exactly. That's what the Labour Party said they, they won the election. Now, that's where I'm heading to. Yeah. You know, Labour Party is in court contesting the election. Yes. And, you know, you are contesting the platform of the Labour Party. Yes. In November, you'll be going to, to court. Uh, and INEC, again, will be conducting that election. Yes. How confident are you in the ability well, of INEC to conduct an election that you and your party will accept? Well, I, you know, we can't condemn INEC now until we get judgment from the presidential uh, tribunal, eh? presidential election tribunal. Because, number one, this innovation of 
Beavers and IRF. I believe in it. You understand? Technology. Technology, yes. I believe in this technology. These amendments to the Electoral Act, I completely believe in it. Because it exposed, like in some, you see some of the results of the judgments that will come out. Because there are some cases, for example, where you have 12,000 accredited voters and you have 79,000 results from a result sheet in this last uh, House of Assembly elections. So, and so many things happened. I, uh, my party made some, you know, this is in court. So I can't really make comments on them. So let the judges uh, let's do their work. Yeah. Uh, they will now decide. That's when we now come and say, oh, this election, everybody has to maybe carry, uh, uh, I mean, arms to defend their, their, their results or not. Uh, what if the you tribunal know, so runs till when you're running and your election comes? When if the tribunal? Runs till when your, your election is going to be held. No, you know, the Electoral Act has a time limit for each leg of this Absolutely. electoral I mean, Absolutely. Uh, legal process. So at least this, pre, pre, uh, uh, maybe Supreme Court, you are talking of Supreme Court. That's what I'm Fine, saying. Supreme Court can last, it doesn't matter. But once the first judgments come out, it will now tell us, because it has come to, to be that it is the courts that now decide elections in Nigeria. No more the voters. So let's see whether this, that's why, the, that's why the, that technological innovation came into the electoral process. So let's see how it affects the legal process as well. But how confident are you in the I'm judiciary? I'm very confident. How confident are you in the judiciary? Let me tell you, I am very, do, do you know, do, when I was in court, when they now summoned INEC, people asked, people were talking about that the judges are corrupt, judges are not corrupt, judges are not corrupt. I have met, seen a lot of judges who have given sound judgments in this country. Now, what I, I went on air. I said, I have respect for the judiciary. That I remember when I was in secondary school, when I was at Gomez College, when we sneak out at night and go to Doris nightclub to dance, <laughs> as we'll be going back, because we'll go through the GRA where judges live. When we're passing the house of judges, we'll be tiptoeing, eh? as if they will hear our footfalls. Because these are men who hold the power of life and death over citizens. I can't see how they can, somebody can come and give them money to change A to B and accept. Maybe this is Nigeria. It's possible. So many people can do that. Conjecture. Again. Yeah, conjecture. Mm. But I still have a lot of confidence in the judiciary. I know a lot of men in the judiciary mm. and women. Courageous. Who do the right thing. Yes. Well, uh, again, uh, we would have to wait and see. But let me come back to uh, you, know, you now and you know, things that uh, you, you want to do differently. Um, you, made, you just made mention of how you believe in technology, how you, know, you, 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 were, you, you, you gave INEC kudos for you know, bringing IREV you know, and BVAS. That's on one part now. Mm -hmm. If you are elected, how do you intend you know, technology currently is, how would I put it now, is, is going head to head in terms of generating revenue with crude. In fact, our experts say in the next two, three years, technology would bring in more revenue than we are currently getting from crude. So what technological plans do you have, you know, in place that you want to put to ensure that we, 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 we see the next Mark Zuckerberg, the next... Uh, Elon Musk, the next uh, uh, Jack Dorsey, you know, coming out of, of Imo State. <laughs> you know that uh, Zinox is from Imo State, Jostan Eke. Absolutely. Jostan Eke, when, uh, were, were classmates. I'm going to put all kinds of pressure as governor. I'm going to make sure he turns Imo into another Silicon Valley. You understand, okay? And once there is relative security in Imo State, once there is good governance, I know that man, I know his mind, he will come and invest. Do you understand? And already I'm talking to, there is a bank that has interest in developing a tech village in Imo State. I'm talking to them. I'm talking to so many people. Do you understand? And then... <laughs> Imo, Imo will be the next destination. There was something I started as, as a private citizen. Huh? I met the same Goodluck Jonathan, president, former president Goodluck Jonathan. 
I told him I wanted it because I contributed money to build the Imo airport as a young person. Ibos built that Imo built that airport. Imo State built that airport. Everybody contributed. It, and they were licensed, it was licensed as an international cargo airport. Up to today, no governor has activated it. No single governor has made any effort to activate it. And then the idea to turn it into a cargo hub is very simple. I approached the president. I told him what I was thinking. He gave a nod. I went to Pius on him. But he now asked his uh, uh, CSO, who is the president's spokesperson of the DSS, to call the Minister of Aviation so that I can go and meet with her and discuss it. I went. At that time, she said she wouldn't be able to do it at that time because she was uh, uh, renovating the airport. As soon as she finished the renovation, she, you know, I can come back. I approached the, our president governor, who was then the chairman of aviation, uh, committee on aviation in the Senate, asked for his support. You understand? I didn't get any support. Anyway, now, can you imagine if Oweri is a cargo hub for West Africa, which it is going to become as soon as I become the governor of the state? Can you imagine what will happen? And then we have plans. See, most of our boys, like if it's in America, all these Yahoo Yahoo boys, American government, those smart ones, they will bring them, create a hub for them to use their brain positively, pay them very well. Do you understand? So you don't, now, in this world now, because I'm going to declare the emergency on power as a government immediately, because we have gas and abundance, and then those companies operating there have uh, 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 domestic obligations to the state. So we're going to have 247 power. We're going to create a hub for these young people to make money through tech. Hmm. We're going to invest in AI. We have, I'm launching my manifesto, you see, very, very, very soon. So, so mm. I, I'm happy you, you, you made mention of a veteran in the technology space, Leo Stan, yes. AK. Mm. Uh, you know, so that's just uh, one, one person. Uh, and, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there are citizens or, you know, indigents of Imo states mm. globally who yeah. are doing well, There's so many. you know, you know in, in, in the tech world. So many. Do you have their support? The, 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 have, the diaspora, have, do you have, have, have their support? support of the diaspora. I sponsored the diaspora bill in the Senate. I sponsored it. I was the first person to sponsor it. I think that was the only thing that continued when I left, the diaspora bill. Because I reasoned that these people who are living in the diaspora, who are used to organized societies that are very, very functional, so they know the quality of persons that you can elect to, into office, and they do well. You understand? Because abroad, they look at your CV. They look at what you have done in your, in your private capacity. Mm. Look at your records. They don't look at how much money you're sharing. Do you understand me? Do they don't even share money. They don't even, they don't even share money. And there is nothing like incumbency. Because if you're not doing well, they throw you out. They vote you out. That's why people have the vote. You understand? That's how you, they, they tell your uh, government that you have done badly or you have done very well. Do you understand? As, yeah. the, as democracy is defined. As democracy is defined. Government of the people for the people. Exactly. And by the people. Exactly. So I said that the, the, the diaspora will now be able to influence voting. You understand me? Through their voting pattern. As time goes on. You understand? It will now will be, begin to now be able to analyze properly and select those who want to uh, uh, leave our commonwealth in their hands. You understand? To administer. So that's why I sponsored that bill. Mm. And so I'm working with diaspora. I just came back from the Houston now. On my way from Houston, a group of professionals in London from Imo, they hosted me at the Reese. In the US, it's overwhelming. The support is incredible. You yes. know, again, you know, the, the support might be overwhelming, you know, from London, Houston, New York, mm -hmm. and, you know, even Lagos. Uh, like you said earlier on, uh, but would they come home and vote? That is no, where it matters you're most. Talking, you asked the question. Yeah. You said the diaspora. I don't know direct me to that. Whether they will work with me in technology yeah. and all that. Yeah. That's why I'm telling you yeah. that I'm in contact with the Imo diaspora mm. all over the place. Uh, you, you, you understand? Yeah. So they're going to work with me. They're going to come home when and When you invest. become elected. When I become elected. Exactly. Mm. And then do you know the amount of money that the, the diaspora that is sustaining the place. The money is they send home. You understand? So they have, they, they can influence the people in their various villages. And this election, let me tell you, it's not about campaigning. 
Everybody defend your boots. Everybody. Diaspora, that money you normally send home. Send it so that those boys will now defend their boots. Once everybody defends their boots, we will get the result from uh, Beavers to IRF. Eh? Nobody can rig election anymore. That is, you see, these are standalone elections. We're going to use it. This will define this government. This is, this election will define whatever administration will be in place at the time it's being conducted. Are you following me? Yeah. Because it is, these are three states, Imo, Bayesa, and Kogi. So the eyes of the entire country will be on them. Are you following me? And so let's just see what happens on 11-11. Very significant day. Well, you know, as I say, time flies, and before yeah. you know it, 11, just, 11, just you know, we'll just, we'll just be around the corner. Yeah. Well, let's uh, look at one issue that, you know, very much plays a key role, you know, in the politics of this country. You know, one uh, issue that has been played over and over again. You can call it a recurring decimal, and, you know, you will not be wrong. And which is this uh, politics of rotation? Yes. How does that play... You know, in Imo, you know, in Imo and, 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 and uh, you know, do you see this as, um, as what should what should be? No, I mean, mean rotation should it be? Yeah. No, actually, it, it's uh, uh, we have reached we, we uh, at this where we are now. We should be looking at competence. Left to me, we should be looking at competence mm -hmm. because, like uh, Peter said the other day, show me where. A Christian can buy bread cheaper. Let me tell Muslims to go and buy. Are you following me? Where can an Olu person buy a bread cheaper that an Okigwe man can go and buy? You understand what I'm saying? So it should be competence. Somebody who who make life, uh, I mean, create, be able to create a better society where people can have jobs, people can have proper Medicare. You understand me? Functional schools. Do you understand? That's what we want. Somebody who can do that. But coming to rotation, rotation favors me as well in Imo State. Because, okay, look, you see, it is because of fear. The insecurity in Imo has instilled so much fear. Look at the number of traditional rulers that have been killed. Nobody knows who is killing them. Nobody knows. Because, okay, for example, in my senatorial zone, all the police stations in the attack Igbo zone have been destroyed. Government has not done anything about it. I, Atanesios Nijidena Nimachono, I have repaired, I repaired the area command at Oriago. They came and dynamited it again. I have bought land to fix the one, you know, I mean, the one, because the one in uh, Himen Baroma is rented, rented place. So I acquired a house. So they said that one is inside, that they need to build it uh, along the road. So I acquired another land now, massive land to build another police station. Do you know what happened? They, I, I spoke with the former IG. I said, please, help. We, I need men at that location. So he gave go ahead. The men that came confided in me, a very intelligent officer, former police officer. He said, sir, look, if you want this thing to work, we need an MOD personnel career, an APC station here, so that the men will be protected and protect the contractors building, rebuilding the place. Then when they settle down, that informants will come and tell them who this was, then they will route them. So they will move to him and Bano and build that one, move to Ituba and repair that one. So they need APCs, and more personal careers, to protect the men's lives, because they are being killed. Do you know what I did? I appealed to the IG. For I mean, to the commission of police, for a more say it doesn't have any. That the ones uh, the governor supplied, they have shared it. So that oh, they have about ten eh, that are dilapidated. I said, do you want me to fix them? He said, if I can, I called Innocent. Innocent came, looked at them, said he can fix them. He gave me a bill of one eighty million. We negotiated. He said, okay, that he will concede 20 as his own input into this, that since I'm doing this on my own, that he's so impressed. I gave him 100 million down payment. Do you know what happened? He, they fixed six. They released one to me. I said, how about, because the agreement was I'll take five. 
then four will be shared in Imo, other areas, not only my area that is facing insecurity. Mm. Okay? Even though I'm from Okigwezo, I mean, I'm a Imo citizen. Mm. And Absolutely. My friends are from Olo, and they don't go home any longer. So I sympathize with them. And that's where the governor comes from. So I said, okay, the rest will be put in Olo, but the four, put in the five for my senatorial zone. They agreed. Only for them to say they don't have drivers. After I have fixed the APCs, so they gave me only one APC. That's what was used during that presidential election to patrol around the place so that people could go and vote. Then I have my daughter who was in hospital in Nashville. So I had to rush. They needed my attention. So I was not there for the uh, House of Assembly elections. Only for me to see on television House of Assembly members being escorted with APCs all over Imo State on that day of election. I was shocked to my marrow. Mm. So I've written a letter to this IG because it's, it doesn't make any sense. I have supported the Nigerian police. I have given over 11, donated over 11 vehicles to the police because security is important to me. We can't, this thing I'm preaching, that we should have a vibrant economy. It can't happen with, as since uh, 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 Okiro till today, I've been donating vehicles to police. You understand me? Uh, so at this one, this hundred million, if they don't do that, I'm going to. They have to pay me back my money. They don't. Uh, I, I would have thought you did it for for humanity. Yeah, but if, if I don't region. have, if I don't, if for my zone, please, I'm not government. Governor has security votes for God's sake. I'm not a governor yet. From the November, I will be doing it with my with security votes. But this I did as an individual. So why don't they let me have them so that we, there is no movement in that area, all the time? In, in, you understand? People don't move around. People are so scared. But that is, if you see the confidence that vehicle is still in my area during that election, you won't believe it. So you can imagine what five can achieve. Absolutely. Uh, but, but again, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, another recurring decimal, you know, uh, is after any election, you have candidates always uh, uh, rushing to the election petition tribunal, yes. uh, you know, to lay complaints, you know, talk about their, their, their grievances. Um, you, you, you just said how confident you are, you know, in the judiciary and, uh, and, and also, you know, even in INEC. So what would be your first move should in case, should in case you do not win this election? Would you be going I to the election definitely. tribunal? I'll win, definitely. But in, if I don't, I don't go, I've never, ever gone to court when I'm wrong in my life. I've never. That's why I, there's one man I have the greatest respect for, Chief Clement Ounna. He was the Abga candidate when we ran for Senate. You know what he did? He, they went to court. He said no, that I won the election, I mean, clear. Fair and square. Yes. That even when he was, contest, when he was campaigning, that kids will see me, will see him coming. They will think it's me. They will bend their hand uh, 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 like this, and they will, they will have a, a, a cassava stem, hold it up, the way I used to hold my offer. Then they will bend one of their hands to show that they have one arm. I go to act, I go to hailing him, thinking that it, uh, it was me. So that it shows what the parents say in the house. You know, kids, eh? they, when you want to know what a family is discussing, you get it from the information from their kids. So it shows the man, mind and heart of, of the Okigwe people. That I won. Okigwe people love me. That he, will not, he withdrew his case from court. Are you following me? Because, you know, supporters will egg you on. Go to court. Go to court. He said, no. That's a perfect gentleman. That's a man I respect. I hold in high esteem. Chief Clement Ounna. Well, uh, like we said, you know, time flies. And before you know it, 11-11 uh, will be around the corner. Uh, we would see um, how things will play out if uh, you know it will favor you or not, and we would see how you will come for my inauguration, the, the, my the, friend. The, the I'm pendulum. Gonna you for we'll see, we'll <laughs> see how the pendulum will swing, you know, at that point. But uh, for my Senator, uh, one arm general, I have to say thank you, yeah, uh, you know, for joining us uh, on the show, and of course, I uh, wish you good luck uh, uh, on 11 11. Thank you, and hope that. Um, we'll just wait and see how things will play out. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Absolutely, hope that uh, the region will be secure. 
uh, residents and indigents would come out in their numbers they will. Uh, to choose uh, you know who would lead because them I'm on the ballot they for will. the next four years <laughs> thank you again for coming thank you. On, on it's the been show. a pleasure absolutely it's been a pleasure well that's the show today thank you so very much for watching we've been speaking to senator ethan um, neji uh, who is contesting for the governorship of imo state under the platform of the labor party come the 11th of november 2023 thank you very much for watching I'm Victor Mathias. It's bye for now.